Curious about the building codes that regulate safety glass requirements in doors? Well, here are some clips from my on-demand course, IRC Chapter 3, The Human Element, available only at buildingcodecollege.com. The 2021 International Residential Code details seven locations in Section R308.4 where there's a higher probability someone will stumble and fall into or through nearby glass. These locations require safety glazing, and here's a clip about one of them. The first one is glazing in doors. For example, this glazing in the top of the door here, or in sliding glass doors, and it applies to the operable panel as well as the fixed panel. And so that includes the fixed panel in a door like this, any door assembly. Now, the first exception of two is for glass openings that don't allow the passage of a three-inch sphere. And this is about doors, so where do you think this rule came from? That's right, from the Consumer Product Safety Commission standard that doesn't require safety glazing when glass openings are that small. And this speaks well to the point. Three inches limits how much of your body can go through and thus how much injury can be occurred. Now, the second exception is for decorative glazing. And though most folks would just call this stained glass, it has a very specific definition. It's a carved, leaded, or dolly glass or glazing material. All right, but what's dolly glass? Well, there's an IRC definition for it too. But I'm not going to read it to you. You can read it for yourself. I, honestly, I'm not even sure how to pronounce this. So I went to Wikipedia, and of course, you can just see Dolly Glass is stained glass, as normal folks would call it. To figure out how to pronounce it, I found this YouTube video. Dolly. Okay, it's called Dolly Glass. All right, let's go back to the definition for decorative glazing. It also says that it has to be decorative only and not functional. So this would rule out an operable window. And as that would attract more people towards the glass to open and close the window, and that then raises the probability of human contact. Now next it says that the color, texture, or design cannot be removed without damaging the glazing. And this keeps people from using translucent colored stickers to make fake stained glass. Finally, it makes it clear that it must be an assembly of segments. And that really brings us right back to this first image of stained glass. And of course, this is doors, so where do you think this exception originates from? The federal standard. Now finally, what safety glazing standard is required? We already know doors have to meet the Consumer Product Safety Commission standard, but you can see that glazing in storm doors and standard doors, the nine square feet threshold determines which category of the standard applies. For sliding glass doors, however, Category 2 is always required. I hope those clips were helpful to you. For the full on-demand course, go to buildingcodecollege.com and click the link to the course catalog. Near the top of the list of courses, you'll find IRC Chapter 3, The Human Element. You can watch the first course video by simply clicking the thumbnail image. For four months of 24-7 access to the full three-hour ICC-approved course, it's only $45 and a few clicks away. But you can get 10% off any enrollment using the coupon code YouTube.